So, I mean, if you're talking about sporadic linkages, you can go back to 3,500 BC, ancient Sumer, which a lot of people do. Um, moving forward in time, you can talk about the Roman Empire trading in silk from China. Um, moving forward in time again, you can talk about you know, Marco Polo and the various friars that went over to China, sojourned there uh, in the 13th century. Important though all that is, um, these are not sustained uh, connections. So what we need are regular connections, um, wide connections in the sense that it's not just a relationship between the West and one, like the Middle East, for example, but the whole of the non-West, and impactful relations, i.e. these relations shape uh, Western civilization and perhaps vice versa. Although, in fact, for most of the time before 1800, it was the East shaping the, the West and not the other way around. Um, so, to cut a long story short, although Europe had strong relations, not very good relations, with the Islamic Middle East after about 750, 800, it was, it was really, I would say, after 1500. Now, of course, when I say 1500, everyone thinks of the age of discovery and Europe going out. And Actually, that's not what I have in mind. Um, I talk about the first global economy uh, emerging around that time. And the key players, China, India, Middle East, Africa. Europeans played a role, not an insignificant role, but it's a kind of brokerage role. These were the, it was these non-Western powers that were crucial. That's when you can really start to see these east-west connections going on strong. But, you know, when we think of globalisation, we think of something after 1945. No, this was going on a lot, lot earlier. 